Greenwich Village, film, from Wikipedia, the free online encyclopedia at wikipedia.org. Greenwich Village is a 1944 American film from 20th Century Fox, directed by Walter Lang. It stars Carmen Miranda and Don Amici. Plot. In 1922, aspiring composer Kenneth Harvey, Don Amici, travels from the Midwest to Greenwich Village, New York, where he hopes to interest famed composer Kowalski in his concerto. Kenneth wanders into a speakeasy owned by the brash Danny O'Hare, William Bendix, who wants to put on a musical extravaganza showcasing his singing sweetheart Bonnie Watson, Vivian Blaine. Danny hopes that the show will make Bonnie a star and make up for the fact that he cost her an opportunity of playing a leading role for Ziegfeld. Danny's other main entertainer, Princess Carita, Carmen Miranda, mistakenly assumes that Kenneth is rich although the few hundred-dollar bills he innocently flashes are the extent of his traveling money. Danny immediately targets Kenneth as a chump and begins to get friendly with him, but Bonnie disapproves and allows Kenneth to escort her home. At her apartment, Bonnie confesses that when she came to Greenwich Village, she had aspirations to become a poet and advises Kenneth to be more careful about displaying his money. Danny, jealous of Kenneth and Bonnie's obvious attraction to each other, brings the gang up to Bonnie's apartment for a party, and Kenneth plays some of his concerto for them. The next morning, Danny arranges for Kenneth to move to the top floor apartment and begin writing songs for their show, although Bonnie stipulates that music from Kenneth's concerto must be withdrawn from the show if Kowalski likes it. Meanwhile, Hoffer, a former violinist with Kowalski's orchestra, persuades the maestro to hear Kenneth play, which Kowalski reluctantly does to get rid of Hoffer. Hoffer then lies to Kenneth, telling him that Kowalski wants to perform his concerto at Carnegie Hall and that they should begin the orchestrations immediately. Kenneth works hard on his music, which he withdraws from Danny's show, even though Bonnie has already written the lyrics. Danny is infuriated, especially when he sees Bonnie and Kenneth kiss, but Bonnie is thrilled by Kenneth's seeming good fortune. Unknown to Bonnie, Danny, who continues to rehearse the numbers using Kenneth's music, is aware of the situation when Hoffer swindles Danny out of his life savings, which Hoffer, Felix Bresser, says is the down payment on the musician's wages for the Carnegie Hall performance. Hoffer disappears with the money, and Kenneth discovers his treachery after speaking to the surprised Kowalski. The heartbroken Kenneth is on his way home when he sees Hoffer returning the money to Danny, who has realized that Bonnie is truly in love with Kenneth. The young composer misunderstands the situation and assumes that Danny and Bonnie were in on the swindle. While Kenneth is angrily packing, Carita questions him and learns of his misapprehension. She then gets him arrested by giving him some bootleg liquor to carry, and while Kenneth languishes in jail, Danny, Bonnie, and the others step up their rehearsals and prepare to open the show. On opening night, Danny's right-hand man, Brophy, bails Kenneth out of jail, and the irate composer rushes over to the theater to confront Danny. As he watches from the audience, Kenneth is amazed to see Kowalski conduct his concerto, which has been turned into an elaborate number featuring Carita and Bonnie. Kenneth rushes backstage, where Danny reveals that Kowalski volunteered his services after learning of the swindle perpetrated by Hoffer. Danny also advises Kenneth to make up with Bonnie, and after her final number, Kenneth embraces her in the wings. Production Information in the 20th Century Fox Produced Scripts Collection, located at the UCLA Arts, indicates that Robert Ellis, Helen Logan, and Valentine Davies worked on early versions of the screenplay for this picture. Their contribution to the completed film is doubtful, however. According to news published by The Hollywood Reporter on the 29th of October, 1942, Alice Faye and Phil Regan were originally scheduled to star in the picture. Other actors announced by The Hollywood Reporter as having been cast included Ronald Graham, Jack Oakey, who was to play Danny O'Mara, according to Studio Records, Phil Baker, and Perry Como, who was to make his debut in the picture. In July 1943, The Hollywood Reporter also reported that Lillian Porter had been cast in the film, but her appearance in the completed picture has not been confirmed. Although the on-screen credits introduce actress Vivian Blaine in her first featured role, Blaine had appeared in several previous productions for 20th Century Fox, including a starring role in the 1943 film Jitterbugs. According to an item published by The Hollywood Reporter on the 2nd of November, 1943, the studio placed Blaine into Greenwich Village after showing two theater audiences a test reel of Technicolor footage of Blaine, Gail Robbins, Faye Marlowe, Lois Andrews, and Doris Merrick, then asking the audiences to choose their favorite.
The picture marked the screen debut of The Reviewers, a cabaret group featuring Judy Holliday, who was billed as Judith Tuvim on the CBCS, Betty Comden, Adolph Green, and Alvin Hammer. Although news published by The Hollywood Reporter indicated that The Reviewers' satiric sketch of a Schubert operetta had been purchased by the studio for their debut, their sequence was cut from the finished picture, and modern sources note that the group appears only in the party scene at Bonnie Watson's apartment. After the group broke up, Holiday became a well-known Broadway and motion picture comedian and won an Academy Award for Best Actress for Born Yesterday. Comden and Green became a popular songwriting team whose films included On the Town. Actor Felix Bressart was borrowed from MGM for the production. According to information in the film's file in the MPAA PCA collection at the AMPAS library, the production code administration initially rejected the screenplay due to sustained scenes of excessive and unnecessary drinking and drunkenness. News published by The Hollywood Reporter in November 1942 noted that songwriter Leo Robin was teamed with Nacio Herb Brown to compose the film's songs after Robin's longtime collaborator, Ralph Ranger, died in a plane crash on the 23rd of October 1942. In a 27th of October, 1943, the Hollywood Reporter news item listing songs that were to be included in the film, the Robin and Brown songs, I'm Down to My Last Dream, You Make Me Mad, Oh Brother, Never Before, That Thing They Sing About, I've Been Smiling in My Sleep, and I Have to See You Privately were mentioned, but none of these titles were in the completed picture. Carmen Miranda's rendition of Give Me a Band and a Bandana includes excerpts from Okweikwe Abayana Tem by Dorval Kemi and Quando Upenso na Bahia by Ari Barroso. Cast Carmen Miranda as Princess Coreta O'Toole, Donna Michi as Kenneth Harvey, William Bendix as Danny O'Mara, Vivian Blaine as Bonnie Watson, Felix Bressart as Hoffer. Critical Reception Technicolor is the picture's chief asset, said the New York Times of Greenwich Village, a Fox musical from a decidedly lesser tier than the studio's great A productions, but still worth a look for the presence of Carmen Miranda and, yes, Leon Shamroy's Technicolor cinematography. Peggy Simmons wrote in a review for the Miami News, quote, Fortunately for Greenwich Village, the picture is made in Technicolor and has Carmen Miranda. Unfortunately for Carmen Miranda, the production doesn't do her justice. The overall effect is disappointing. But still, she sparkles the picture whenever she appears, end quote. Times Review complained that the cast was hardly formidable enough to sustain a movie with such thin plot and characters, and while that may be true, it's still interesting to see how Fox tried to launch Vivian Blaine as a big new star. And it's unique, to say the least, to see William Bendix sing and dance. Bendix had recently become a star-supporting player and had already perfected a screen persona of a lovable doofus. Time Magazine's review of Greenwich Village marveled at how the persona was just that. In real life, apparently, Bendix was cultivated and mannered. Quote, Bendix is probably the world's highest paid professional ignoramus, said Time. As such, he now rates star billing at his studio and makes more money than the president of the U.S. End quote. Vivian Blaine was touted as a newcomer by the Fox publicity machine, but in truth, she had already been credited in four previous films, including Jitterbugs 1943, in which she played a significant role opposite Laurel and Hardy. She went on to do more movies and television, but she never became a movie star. She will instead best be remembered for her stage work, especially as the original Miss Adelaide in the stage and screen versions of Guys and Dolls, 1950 stage, 1955 film. Carmen Miranda, on the other hand, who here sings Give Me a Band and a Bandana, was still at the peak of her popularity, with Greenwich Village coming hot on the heels of her best and most famous film, The Gang's All Here, 1943. Film historian Janine Basinger has written astutely that the Brazilian bombshell, quote, wasn't a real movie star, but someone who did star turns in movies. She was an important escape fantasy of World War II, end quote. From the star machine, Knopf. Known for her insanely over-the-top costumes, elaborate fruit-laden headpieces, and hugely energetic singing and dancing, Carmen Miranda was always exaggerated to a delightful level. DVD Release the film was released on DVD in June 2008 as part of Fox's The Carmen Miranda Collection. See also List of American Films of 1944. This article was recorded on September 23, 2019.